This is a hell of a time to be a Spider-Man fan, right? Hi everybody, Anthony here from Awesome Anthony Productions, and today I'm going to talk to you about my most anticipated movie of the year so far, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Sorry it took a hot minute to get this review out, I was a little under the weather last week and didn't get a chance to film, but better late than never. And lastly, before I get started, please make sure to leave a like to help out the channel, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss any of my new content. Now let's get into it. Now, big shocker here, I'm obviously a Spider-Man fan. I'm, I'm shocked. I I'm shocked. And I absolutely adored Into the Spider-Verse. It's a mature story that brings in a ton of lore and respect for all things Spider-Man. The absolute glow-up they gave a character that was never really a favorite of mine from the comics, Miles Morales. And the groundbreaking animation that combined really great stylistic CGI with hand-drawn touches that made the entire thing feel like a comic book came to life. To the point where if you pause any scene of that movie, you could frame it. I've looked at this for five hours now. And I honestly wasn't that sure that it was even going to get a sequel because the first one didn't really do that well in theaters. So when Across the Spider-Verse was announced and it was announced that it was going to be a two-parter, I was very hyped, to say the least. And let me tell you, does this movie deliver? And I have no qualms about saying that it's a f***ing masterpiece just like the last one. Across the Spider-Verse picks up about a year after the last one, with Miles Morales once again voiced by Shameik Moore, dealing with the typical Spider-Man problems of trying to juggle his education and personal life and relationship with his parents, with his duties of being Spider-Man, along with the stress that his constant absence and flakiness puts on his relationship with his parents. That's when The Spot, a villain covered in interdimensional portals that can throw them whatever he wants, voiced by Jason Schwartzman, shows up to assert himself as Miles' new nemesis. In the beginning, he starts as a complete joke, being mocked mercilessly by Miles during their first fight as Spider-Man usually does, and that first fight also serves to give us a glimpse into the fantastic action in this movie. But when Haley Steinfeld's Gwen Stacy, who gets actually a lengthy intro in her universe that makes her just as much of a lead in this movie as Miles, shows back up in Miles' universe with news of an interdimensional spider society, Miles will go through an adventure through multiple universes, meeting hundreds of other spider people along the way, including Spider-Man Mumbai, Pavitar Prabhakar, voiced by Deadpool's Karan Sony in his city of Mumbai in his India-inspired universe, Issa Rae's Jessica Drew in all of her pregnant glory, Daniel Kaluuya's Spider-Punk with his constant spouting of anti-establishment sentiment, Andy Samberg's Ben Riley, aka the Scarlet Spider, voiced perfectly over the top to go with how over the top that character was in the 90s, and of course, the leader of the Spider Society, Miguel O'Hara, voiced by Oscar Isaac, coming back from the post credit scene from the first movie. Let's start at the beginning. How dare you point at me? You, you were pointing first. Rude to point. You're being very rude. And here, he is a lot more dramatic and a very intense leader that will do whatever he can to protect the Spider-Verse, no matter what sacrifices need to be made along the way. All of this is introduced to Miles, all while the spot is growing more and more powerful, going from a complete joke to an actually kind of scary villain, threatening the entire multiverse and everything Miles cares about. So those are Miles' two main conflicts throughout the film. Capture and defeat the spot, and make his own story, do his own thing, going against the narrative of tragedy that every single Spider-Man has experienced in their life. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Okay, now for my review. If you have been with me since the beginning of my channel, or just watched the beginning of this review, you'll know that Into the Spider-Verse was my top film of 2018. Number one, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Quite possibly the best Spider-Man movie ever created. And I was always excited for the sequel, like I said. Though I'm not gonna lie, I did have a few reservations, just little tiny things gnawing at the back of my head wondering like are they really gonna be able to pull this off again holy shit did i not need to worry whatsoever this movie is absolutely fantastic taking everything that works so well in that masterpiece of the original and dialing it up to 11. right across the board Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11. The, the animation, the hilarious humor, the expanded cast, the story, which is probably my favorite story from any Spider-Man movie, the villain, the Easter egg on Easter eggs on Easter eggs that just fill the screen, making your eyes dart all over the place looking for something new, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan. The incredible score and soundtrack, I loved all of it. There's nowhere to run. My bad, everybody. There was somewhere to run. Once again, the animation is absolutely eye-popping and jaw-dropping. Continuing that unique style of CGI with hand-drawn effects aesthetic from the first movie, along with all the little frame rate drops and different frame rates on different characters, that really just adds so much dynamic energy and fun to this movie. And just like the last one, if you pause any part of this movie, you can take that frame and hang it on your wall, because it is f beautiful. It looks like it was taken just out of a comic book. And with the added excitement of Miles going to all these different universes, we get to see multiple different animation styles, like the watercolor background of Gwen's universe that drip and get brighter and darker depending on her mood. The animated Bollywood style looks like an Indian comic book come to life with Mumbatton with its vibrant colors and endlessly vertical skyscrapers. And traffic literally everywhere. Mumbatton! This is where the traffic is, this is also where the traffic is, there's traffic here too! The smooth, futuristic, skyscraper-laden landscape of Nueva York and the absolute
absolute treat for the eyes that is the Spider Society HQ, along with a couple others that I can't mention here. Plus, when characters go into other universes, they maintain that same animation style from their own, so it's really fun and beautiful to see how all these different animation styles interact with each other, an effect that is especially obvious on Spider-Punk, who has a sort of magazine-looking art style that makes this super cool character that much more fun to watch. Speaking of characters, though I did miss the occasional quip from John Mulaney's Spider-Ham or Nick Cage's Spider-Man Noir, this is purple. Now. Blue. Now. This cast is just as great as the first one. Shameik Moore once again kills it as the voice of Miles. I wish he wasn't too old because he would be great playing that character in live action. But with his voice, he brings that confidence and smooth sense of humor whenever Miles is in his costume, while also bringing that teenage angst and portraying that feeling of not knowing where he belongs when he's outside of the suit. And when the story dives into some pretty heavy shit that all Spider-Men know all too well, he really brings the dramatic weight with his voice. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. As our co leading Gwen Stacy, I thought Haley Steinfeld did an even better job here than the first one, bringing more dramatic weight to the character as we dive into her character, her relationship with her dad and her psyche in the beginning, and her decision to eventually join the Spider Society. And as the movie goes on, Steinfeld's voice runs the gamut of emotions, from very natural, light flirting and joking whenever she's with Miles, to great Spider-Man quipping during the fight scenes, to the more dramatic scenes when she has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miguel O'Hara when they're discussing dramatic stuff. I honestly just thought that Steinfeld completely killed it and gave a performance that made me think of this character as Spider-Gwen, not Haley Steinfeld voicing Spider-Gwen. I also want to shout out two characters that don't have the biggest parts in the movie but definitely bring a lot of emotion and actually a lot of humor to the movie too, especially for the parents in the audience, and that's Miles' parents. And a B in Spanish. What? Woo! Okay. Miles, are you trying Mira, to kill him? Brian Tyree Henry continues his loving yet stern father figure for Miles. How's this going? Miles. In Lieutenant Jefferson Morales. And his interactions with Rio, Miles' mom, voiced by Luna Velez, are always either heartwarming or hilarious. And there was a couple emotional moments between Rio and Miles that actually made me choke up a bit, echoing his moments with his dad from the first one. I've mentioned all the new Spider people already, and they all did a great job. Though Issa Rae's Jessica Drew doesn't really have that much to do, and no matter how they animate it, there's no way for it to not look weird having a fully pregnant woman fly around the screen doing all this action stuff. But between Pavita, Spider-Punk, and Miguel O'Hara, they all have a heavy impact on the story in both Miles and Gwen's journeys, while getting plenty of moments to make your jaw drop and plenty of moments to make you laugh with a one-liner or a really well-crafted joke. I just gotta emphasize that. This movie is really funny. It's something that not a whole lot of people have been talking about, but there are so many jokes that have already become memes that are all over the internet, and every time I see them, I watch them just because I think they're that funny. I can't wait to go see this movie in theaters again. Maybe get off the kid's ass. I'm sorry, what? What? Anyways, back to the characters. I've got to bring up Spider-Punk, Hobie Brown, one more time. Because I think he's my favorite new character in the movie. Between his ever-evolving punk magazine-style animation, his really unique and cool design, and the fact that he just oozes British charm while being a punk that actually practices what he preaches, makes him just a great character. I've got to be honest, I was a little annoyed when he first came in, thinking like, oh great, this is definitely a modern audience character. But he lives what he talks about with punk, he's there for Miles and Gwen, he's a good friend, and he's not only a badass, but he's really funny too. So he's definitely a great character, and I can't wait to see more of him in the next one. I also really enjoy Miguel O'Hara's character here and how he takes on a bit more of a villainous role in the story. Though his motivations are completely understandable, and he never crosses the line into fully evil. He's more just an asshole. Respect every single Spider-Man in here. Does that include no, you fuck Lastly here, I want to mention my favorite character from the first one, Jake Johnson's Peter B. Parker. Though he's not nearly in the movie as much as I wanted, he still brings that lovable dad energy and feels like a natural progression of this Peter who, in the first one, felt like he leapt right off the comic page. And now they're just keeping that going even though he's aged and now has a baby. He even has a moment to connect with Miles on a really deep level, echoing some of their moments from the first one. And I just mentioned his baby, but him walking around with Mayday with her little web shooter and crocheted Spider-Man little hood that she has just added another layer of humor and cuteness to his scenes even though it's a little weird that he's bringing his baby on life-threatening missions. Okay, so I mentioned the animation, the character- Oh, the story! This story is absolutely brilliant, especially for lifelong fans of Spider-Man who are aware of this character, all these different variations, and the mainstays of every single one of these characters, the tragedies they endure, the people that they lose. Miles, there's moments in our stories that are the same for all of us. It simultaneously propels Miles' story forward with a lot of maturity and ramping stakes, gives Gwen a full character arc that made her that much stronger of a character for me, and tells the first start of an epic concluding story that connects spider people from every dimension and leaves the fate of the Spider-Verse up in the air, capping it all off with a cliffhanger that made my entire audience groan. Because we all just wanted more. 
Don't worry guys, we only have to wait until March. Just like that first masterpiece of the film, this movie just oozes Spider-Man in every frame and shows so much love and respect for that character, his legacy, and what it truly means to be that character in your own unique way, while still finding unique and original ways to bring up familiar story beats and tie them into the greater multiverse. And it absolutely holds on to its heart and emotional core throughout the exciting two hours and 15 minutes that just flew by for me. I know I've said that word like five times in this review, but it really is a masterpiece. This movie is art, this movie has so much love and dedication behind it. It took a long time to complete and every second of that was so worth it. If they can pull this off in March with Beyond the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales may go down as having one of the best superhero trilogies of all time. And that's my review of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. If you like this review, like I said in the beginning, please leave a like, it really helps out the channel, and you can also subscribe and ring the bell so that you never miss any of my new content. You can also find the links to my socials in the description below, and leave a comment with your thoughts if you want. And while you're at it, you can click or tap on these cards right here. It'll take you to my review of the live-action Little Mermaid, or just over to my channel where you can check out my reviews, my shorts, and my old shit. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time for my review of Transformers Rise of the Beasts.